official credit union of UTSA Roadrunners. HEB, no store does more than HEB. And by Methodist Healthcare, the official hometown healthcare provider of UTSA Athletics. Now, live at the Sandbox near the campus of UTSA, this is the Steve Henson Radio Show. Here is your host, the voice of the Roadrunners, Andy Everett. Good evening, everyone, and welcome aboard. It is the week two of the Steve Henson Radio Show. And guess what? The UTSA Roadrunners are in first place in Conference USA. How about that? We are at the Sandbox, the corner of Babcock and UTSA Boulevard. Come on by if you're in the area. We'll talk basketball for the next hour. We're a half hour early tonight because our flagship station, Ticket 760, will go to Longhorn Basketball at 7.30 this evening. So we make way for that. And glad that you're with us wherever you may be. Go UTSA.com, the iHeart app, and tune in as well as Ticket 760. Steve Henson joins us. How you feeling? Pretty good at 4-0, huh? Yeah, got a nice ring to it. Being first in the league always sounds good. But, uh, yeah, guys, guys are feeling good. Proud of what they're doing. Uh, let's talk about the uh, games last week with Rice and, of course, the big win over North Texas. And each was a little bit different, but you got the job done with both uh, W and both. Yeah, we did. We were pretty locked in. You know, Rice came in here feeling good. They had won their two previous games. Uh, they're, they're improved. They've got some good players. And, uh uh, we, we came in locked in, did a good job in that ball game, and then and North Texas came in playing really, really good basketball. Uh, they're a tough matchup. Uh, they're, they're an interesting team in the way they can play uh, incredibly slow pace and be mm-hmm. successful, and then they can flip the switch and play uh, at high octane. And, and uh, with the exception of one little, little stretch there defensively, I thought our guys were, were pretty good uh, all night long. We'll talk about North Texas first because there's so much in that game. And obviously, Javon Jackson hits the game winner, and they have to get a desperation shot with a second left. But uh, he uh, always lives in the moment, doesn't he? He does. He, he, he loves the, the, the big spot. He loves the spotlight. Uh, the, bigger, the bigger the game, the bigger the moment, the better he performs typically. And uh, he, he delivered. You know, right before that, actually, he had a really, really good look. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, a better look than the one he actually hit. And uh, <laughs> it just rolled out. And then Byron Fronin came up with a huge, huge tip to, to keep the ball alive, got it back to us. Uh, we were able to call a timeout, and we wanted to run an ISO for Javon at that point. And uh, he stepped through and, and threw it in. Uh, I've always said that people in, in those moments, they're not afraid to fail. They, they enjoy that spotlight. And if they fail, then I'll get them the next time. And it's like the shooter that misses 10 in a row. The, well, the next one's going to go in. And when you have that mindset, uh, you have a, a special player. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Javon's been scoring at such a high rate his entire life that uh, is, is what he does most naturally. And, and he wants the ball in that situation. And the good thing is we have other guys that can deliver in those mm-hmm. situations. Giovanni. Uh, you know, here with us tonight, we'll talk to him. But, but the second he stepped on campus, he made big shots with the game on the line. He Keaton, owns Louisiana Tech. He, he does. He does. Uh, <laughs> Keaton Wallace has made huge plays this year. You know, maybe not actual game winner, but with, with a minute to go in a game. The other night with a minute 20 to go in a game. And uh, he delivers in the clutch. So uh, we, we've got several guys that, that – that uh, are confident in those situations. Uh, the uh, the defense on Ryan Walridge, the point guard for North Texas, who's one of the top point guards in the nation, was don't let him go left. And for the most part, you didn't. You he, he, Those guys are always going to find a way to go left at some point, but but you got him to go right most of the time, and he kept uh, the ball in front of you. So we did a, did a pretty good job on him. He still ended up with a pretty impressive stat yeah. line, but, but he, he's as explosive or he's as fast as, as maybe any player I've seen in person. I mean, it's just phenomenal how – how he can he can get your back off of him. You give mm-hmm. him space. You sit on his left hand, and he still just blows by you going left. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. But our guys, our, overall, our guys fought it pretty hard. He got a couple of easy ones in there. Uh, when he did get in a crowd, we we did a pretty good job of, of keeping him from dishing it. We tried to make him go right, um, and he had some success doing that as well. But uh, you know, we talked to our guys that we knew that game was going to be a game of battles. You know, you're going to have to you're going to have to fight. Uh, smart, you know, he's a good offensive player. You're going to have to fight Gibson. He's a good offensive player. Uh, there's just times where you got to got to get involved in the battles. You're not going to win every single one of them, but we have to win uh, enough to find a way to win the game, and we did that. You got a 10-point lead, and it looked like, okay, there may be a one or two stops and some separation. You got it, and then, boom, all of a sudden it's tied. Yeah, we had a stretch there offensively, which was as good as maybe as we've had in, in weeks where we, we called a play and, and got a good result, called a play and got a layup, called a play and got the right shot. Uh, and it was a good thing we did because they, they were coming down at us at that point. When they fell behind, they switched gears, uh, started playing faster, attacking us, and, uh, yeah, ran off nine in a row on us. And we, we, you know, we had a 
had to call timeout, make a little adjustment, and, and uh, threw a couple possess possessions of zone at him at the very, very end of the game just to get them to slow down. Why does the zone defense continue to befuddle people? I mean, they can hit shot after shot after shot, and you throw a zone at them, and they don't know what to do. Well, it's it's just so you just much don't different. See it very much, I guess. Yeah, you know, and and when people prepare for us, they know we're mostly man, so they're not going to spend much time in practice preparing against the zone. And we're only going to use it sparingly, but but yeah, it, it, that's one of the effects it can have. You know, we played some zone against uh, uh, UTEP with the objective to to, to jam up keep the ball out of their big guy's hands. You know, sometimes you're playing zone to, to break the rhythm, to keep them from penetrating. Sometimes you're playing zone to try to get to the shooters. Um, there, there's different reasons for it, and uh, it has been been pretty helpful for us here. Corpus Christi, we played a few minutes of zone at the end of the game when they were doing the same thing like North Texas, trying to drive it, drive it, drive it. So uh, man is our base, but, but uh, zone has its purpose. In the Rice game, you got four players that total for 79 points uh, with Nick and, and Giovanni both either matching or, or getting their career highs. You're going to be a hard team to beat if four guys score almost 80 points. Yeah, no question. That was, that was a great sign, uh, something we'd like to see more often. You know, Nick's been playing with more confidence lately. He just seems more freed up, making more shots in practice, making some threes in games. Uh, I think that night he was four for eight from the three, uh, which was great to see. Giovanni's been, been playing very, very well, just hasn't shot it well. Both those guys had big first half against Rice. So uh, when, when, when they get clicking, it makes it easier for Giovanni Keaton. Uh, you know, Byron, Byron will have those nights where he only takes one shot and he'll have come back the next night and, and go six for six. So uh, balanced scoring would, would do our offense wonders. Other than the obvious with Javon back in full minutes and everybody kind of having defined roles, what's different about this basketball team, say, before Arkansas, the Arkansas game, uh, the November-December schedule, because I thought December, the, the Arkansas game, we had a great chance to win that game. But that kind of is where I saw this team starting to mature and develop. What do you see on film and with the, uh, the demeanor of the team that's different now, that's in a positive than what we saw when they were still trying to find their roles in November-December? Yeah, it's not anything dramatic. I think it's just been steady progress. You know, we, we, we were a pretty good defensive team all along, and now we're, I think, a very good defensive team. The numbers uh, indicate that we're – that we're one of the best defensive teams in Conference USA. Um, so we've continued to buy in. We, we understand the importance of that. Uh, the, the defining of the roles has been huge. Guys getting more comfortable in those roles. Uh, and, and then guys getting comfortable. You know, the, the starters, we kind of knew what to expect from those guys. Mm -hmm. Most of those guys are returners. And, and, and a, you know, Byron, uh, you know what to expect from Byron. Giovanni just wasn't shooting it quite as well as he was earlier in the year. Now he's back to his normal self. Nick's back the way he was. And, and the, two, the two guys are playing big minutes off the bench. I think you, you've seen their confidence grow. You know, Atem defensively does a good job, and now now he understands what we're asking of him offensively. Adokie is was struggling shooting the three-pointers. We told him just to turn those down, drive it, make plays. Uh, he's done that. And then uh, see him actually knock one down at the yeah. end of the first half was great <laughs> as well. We told him, you know, shot clock's under 10. You get that corner three-pointer, knock it down, and, and he delivered. So it's just been steady progress. They, they continue to believe. They continue to, to, to trust each other. And, and there was never any panic, you know, early in the year when we weren't winning ball games. Uh, they, they understood that the schedule was tough. They understood what we needed to work on, and, and we made progress. UTSA is 4-0 in league play for the first time since the 88-89 season, and we're back on the road this week at Middle Tennessee and UAB. We'll talk about those two matchups coming up in just a little bit. Hey, Roadrunner fans, Credit Human is proud to be the official credit union of the Roadrunners. Check them out at credithuman.com and go runners. It's the Steve Henson Radio Show. It's presented by Methodist Healthcare. We'll come back and visit with a couple of players, Giovanni DeNicolau and Byron Fronin. That's all straight ahead as the Steve Henson Radio Show rolls on from the sandbox from Learfield. Hey, fans, become a Texas Farm Bureau Insurance member today and receive two free tickets to Roadrunner basketball games when you show proof of membership at the ticket office. Visit your local agent's office for details. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud sponsor of UTSA Athletics. It's the Steve Vincent Radio Show. We're at the Sandbox at UTSA Boulevard and Babcock. Come on out if you're in the area. Right now we are joined by Byron Fronin, UTSA's uh, starting three-man this year. You like that better than the four, don't you? <laughs> I mean... It doesn't matter for me, honestly. <laughs> Whatever coach wants to put me works out. <laughs> but you really like the three better. You don't have to uh, guard the big guys. <laughs> uh, both have their positives. <laughs> they, they do. There's there's some give and take on uh, on both of them. Steve, I, in all the years I've been doing the, the the games, I haven't seen a more fundamentally sound player than Byron. Talk about what you saw in him when you recruited him and what he's delivered in that department over the years. 
Yeah, well, we had I hadn't seen him since he was a pretty young kid coming to our camps when we were coaching at UNLV, so I hadn't seen him as much later in his career as, as Coach Peck had. But, uh, you know, he was surrounded by, by terrific players on his high school team. All they did was win games. Um, he was kind of the third and fourth option, usually offensively, and those other guys were taking all the shots. So uh, he, he was pretty comfortable coming in and, and taking on a role where the ball – or, or there weren't going to be a lot of shots. Now, we work very, very hard to get him the ball now because he makes great decisions, but uh, probably as, as good a feel for the game as any player I've ever been around. I mean, he does everything. Uh, so he won't take jump shots. We beg him to, but he won't take jump shots, but he does everything else. Uh, and the thing maybe that's most unique is, is maybe his hands, just just mm -hmm. how well he, he catches the ball, the way he cuts, his instincts on when to cut. Uh, great feel. I mean, we do things with him not right now like a, like a point forward. We're, we're getting him the ball. And, and letting him create. So uh, he uh, it's kind of a cliche. Coaches like to say, well, he guards one through five. And, and they don't really mean that, but Byron does. Mm -hmm. You know, when he plays the three, we switch one, two, and three. When he plays the four, we switch four and five. And he literally uh, does as good a job as anybody we have keeping quick guards in front of him. He knows how to space them out. And he battles the big guys and uses his quickness in there. And just a terrific all-around player. Byron, several games ago, we saw the, you playing point forward. So uh, tell us about that play, how it got developed, and what do, you, what do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, that's just Coach Henson reaching deep into the bag of tricks, honestly. Um, I mean, he likes to get the ball in my hands, and um, I try to make simple plays, like he said. And, I mean, creativity is nice. I mean, trying, bringing the ball up is fun. I mean, I did that a lot growing up, too. And uh, it, it's fun, definitely creating for my teammates. Well, it was kind of weird because I usually see Gio bringing the ball up the floor. Occasionally, Javon or Keaton will bring it up the floor, and they'll flash to the corners or whatever. And I look up, and, and you're running the, go the, the play. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I like it a lot. I mean, the more the merrier. <laughs> we might see more of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it works. <laughs> so yeah. so was, was this something that you've been thinking about all summer, or how, how did that, that play develop? Well, we, we've run a lot of different plays for Byron in the past. We typically have a, have – two different sections on our little play sheet. One says Byron at the three and one that says Byron at the four. Mm -hmm. And he's got different advantages. You know, one of the reasons he likes, you know, when he's a three, if they guard him with the three, he just overpowers those little guards and gets down the paint, shoots those little shots. If he gets the bigger guys on him, he can blow by him and then he facilitates. Um, so we, we've had things in place for him. Just, just usually we would enter the ball and then get it to him here. We just said, well, let's just not waste any time. Let's let him start the offense for us. Uh, Byron, you played, uh, Steve was mentioning the high school team you played on in Vegas. There was a bunch of guys on that team that went all over the country. All, almost right. all of you are playing basketball somewhere, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you could look down the down the roster and you see guys all over the place, NBA, G League, Europe. Who, who are some of the guys? Uh, Zach Collins is on the Portland Trailblazers, uh, Steven Zimmerman, uh, G League with the Knicks. You got Chase Jeter at uh, Arizona, Chuck O'Bannon's at USC. I mean, you you go down the list. I mean, Shabazz Muhammad's in the league, been in the league, been a six man for a while. A um, bunch of good players. So you didn't, you didn't have to, it didn't matter what the option was, you just had to find a role. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you get what you get there at uh, Gorman. Um, you got to find ways to make stuff happen, even though you don't get the ball a lot, and that's what I try to do. You are great at getting rebounds. You're on pace to be UTSA's all time leading rebounder, and that's a role, I think, kind of like defense. You've got to want to do that, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, rebounding is all effort. I mean, Offensively and defensively, it's just a one-on-one -on -one battle. Um, I know teams lately have been more focused on me going to the glass. They've been kind of doubling me rebounding. Um, but, I mean, I just got to keep going, keep creating opportunities for my teammates to get rebounds as well. Talk a little bit about the patience that this team is showing right now because at the UTEP game, you were seven or eight down and made a big run and came back. At the North Texas game, you have a lead, lose it, and then find a way to win at the end. I never see any panic on this team right now, the way you guys are playing. Yeah, I mean, this, this team's so comfortable with each other right now. I mean, we all have unbelievable trust in each other, and um, we, we know we're going to come out and win. Um, we know we believe in each other, and um, it really doesn't matter what, how the game goes because at the end of the day, we, we believe in each other. You've got to go back on the road this week, and that's always a different mindset because you don't have your fans. You don't have that built-in energy. You were able to kind of manu manufacture your own energy at the UTEP game and in front of almost 14,000 at, at Arkansas. Uh, just kind of take us through what you go through uh, as you prepare for road games. Yeah, I mean, road games are a whole other level. I mean, if you if you win at home, it's going to be 10 times harder on the road. So we got to come in extra prepared, extra locked in, and bring extra energy, especially going to places like Middle with all their history and uh, UAB. Steve, are you continually surprised that the help defense comes from Byron's guy? Because every time that somebody helps off of him, he finds a way to get open. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, Byron's instincts and feel, he does things that you can't teach, you know. So, yeah, if, if they're going to leave him 
uh, you know, he doesn't shoot the three, so they, they, they do roam off of him, but then he mm -hmm. cuts and makes him pay. Uh, rebounding, you know, it, he talks about effort, and he does give great effort, but he's also got a great, you know, people say the nose for the ball, whatever it is, he finds a way to get rebounds. But, uh, you know, we, we continue to talk about getting the ball in his hands, and, and the players want to do that, especially if you get the, get the ball to somebody that's going to give it back to you. Yeah. <laughs> guys are typically pretty, pretty open to that thought. So, uh, you know, again, in addition to you know, catching the ball and finishing it around the rim, uh, he's got a, he's a great passer, you know. So, uh, anytime we can get him on the move, use his quickness, uh, use his size when he's got little guys on him, there's always mismatch opportunities for him. Uh, last year, you guys got a taste of what the postseason's like playing in the CIT tournament. I know you want bigger and better goals this year and that NCAA prize out there. But how much did that kind of kind of sweeten the pot a little bit to know that that goal's out there and achievable? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, like you said, obviously. Uh, Losing the Marshall in the conference tournament hurt because we beat him in the regular season and uh, we knew we could do it again. But I mean, play, playing postseason was good. I mean, if it gets to feel like okay, you come off uh, after a conference tournament and you get to keep playing. I mean, it's fun and you get to keep locked in for more part of the year. Thanks for being out here tonight. Uh, fun to watch you play. Can't wait to keep uh, seeing uh, you develop and uh, and contribute to the Roadrunners. Okay, well, thank you very much. All right, Byron Fronin, everyone, out here at the Sandbox. Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino Hotel and Eagle Pass. You need to go out there and visit or visit EagleTexas.com, LuckyEagleTexas.com to join their all-new Players Club and play your way to greater rewards. Come and play. More of the Steve Vincent Radio Show live from the Sandbox and from Learfield. And from we are back out here at the Sandbox at the corner of UTSA Boulevard in Babcock. It's the Steve Vincent Radio Show. Bud Light's an official sponsor of UTSA Athletics, reminding you to enjoy responsibly. And the Sandbox is where we have the show each week. It's right near the UTSA campus. It's the newest sports bar in town. They've got all kinds of great food, all kinds of beers on tap as well. Come out here to the Sandbox and enjoy. Giovanni DiNicola, UTSA starting point guard, joins us on the show. Welcome. How are you? Push that up just a little bit there. That'll work. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Good, good. Uh, you are officially out of your shooting slump. Uh, you uh, struggled a little bit in December, but January rolls around, and you started making some shots. I know that feels good. Feels good. Feels amazing. Thanks to Coach Hanson. Uh, we worked a lot during practice every day. After practice, you know, working on my technique, and uh, now it's going in, so that feels good. What was it that clicked? Uh, when did you start to have the confidence that you were going to knock down some shots and some threes? I mean, as soon as one went down, I knew I can shoot the other one, and I knew the defense was gonna, not going to help on me too much, so I can have the freedom to shoot it. And you have Javon and Keaton, so they're all paying yeah. attention to them, so you're going to get some open shots. Definitely, yes. All right, Steve, tell me about working with him on his shot, because you have a veteran player, an older player than most of the guys on the team, and yet he's always willing to get better so that uh, you guys can get to where you want to go and working extra on the shots. Yeah, you know, he improved a lot from his freshman to sophomore year with his percentages from the three-point line especially and uh, just got off to a slow start this year and and he continued to work and, you know, we, we knew at some point he was going to get a few to go down but uh, just, just watching him work after practice one day, just, just went and made a simple suggestion to him and didn't know, you know, if, if, if it would feel right or not but just talked to him about stepping in with his left foot every single time um, which is not what we tell every player. You know, we typically tell players that they're going to their left to step in with their right foot but... We just said, let's just step in with the left foot every single time, focus on your balance, and, and, and not focus on jumping very high, mm -hmm. you know, because I thought if there was one, <clears throat> one flaw in his mechanics, sometimes he jumps forward, sometimes he jumps too high, and we just said, you're, you're only going to shoot open shots, so let's just shoot almost like a set shot, uh, and, and thought maybe that might just relax him a little bit, and I don't know if, if that was it or just the fact that he made the next one anyway yeah. and got it going, but whatever it was, we were, we were all excited to see it, excited for him. Giovanni, you're, you're one of the older players on this on the team. Uh, tell tell me about how you're able to kind of not only be the leader on the floor as you are, but because of your age and the the experience that you've had here, you can kind of lead uh, off the floor as well. Oh, definitely, yeah. I try all, all the time to help my teammates, you know, on and off the floor, and uh, I try to talk to them and tell them what I know, and if I have a little bit more experience than them, I tell them on what situation and what they can work on. I try to talk a lot to Doke. Uh, and uh, he, he listened to me a lot, and I love him. He's such a great guy, and uh, I think he, he's going to be incredible. It's pretty amazing when you see somebody mature as he is, and each game his role is getting a little bit bigger and better, and now you can trust him uh, to be able to do the right things offensively and defensively. Definitely, definitely. He's, 
he's very very smart player and yeah I like him a lot your parents were in town uh, first time that they made it to, to, uh, to America from Italy yes first first what was that what was that like for them how much did they how much fun did they have uh, they loved it they loved they loved uh, the atmosphere at the combo they loved everything at uh, UTSA or San Antonio you know first time in America they don't really speak English so I was their translator how'd that go I went well, I think. You know, they learned a couple of words. You know, coach speaks a little bit Italian, so that was, that was nice. Well, you were in the Italian league, weren't you? You kind yeah. of learned that by osmosis, don't you? Yeah, I spent two, four years in Rome, but uh, not, not enough to carry on a very good conversation. But it was great having him here. I know he enjoyed having him here, and I, it, it seemed like they were having a fantastic time. What did they enjoy the most? Uh, I mean, being with me, I think, you know, we always FaceTime almost every day, you uh -huh. know, being finally together and here. It's, it's something they loved it. Did you take them anywhere downtown or anything like that? Yeah, I took them to the Pearl, you know, downtown River Walks. I tr I, they went to the NASA in Houston. Uh -huh. So they had a great time. That, that's awesome. And I'm, you don't get to see, obviously, you're here. You don't get to see them. You go home in the summer maybe for a little bit. But just to have them where you've spent your college time is pretty special. Yeah, definitely. They saw where, you know, on FaceTime, they always see the background. I showed them the gym or the trainer. And uh, they saw it finally, so they were super happy. And, and they're back in Italy now? Yeah, they're back in Italy watching my other brothers. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're, all your brothers play basketball too, don't yes, they? Yes, yes. That's awesome. All right, we've got a big road trip coming up with Middle Tennessee and uh, UAB. We've never won at Middle. Uh, they're not as good as they have been, but they're still a good home team from time to time. I mean, we never won against North Texas too, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> always, always Maybe it is for you, year, right? You know? Right. <laughs> this team... The togetherness of this team, and a lot of teams are always this way, but it gets more and more special, I think, is, as, especially as the season starts to get compacted into the last few games and you kind of kind of get in that uh, battle mode together. Definitely, definitely. You know, especially on defense, I think, I think we, we're locked in and uh, we talked a lot together and uh, on the switches and all those situations on the game. We are really locked in together, and as a group, I think we improved a lot. Steve, uh, with Tim Carter doing the broadcast with me over the last couple of years, he's mentioned several times, I see it a lot with Byron. We certainly see it with Gio. You take them off the floor for their rest minutes, and there's no matter who's on the floor, it, there's something that isn't the same as when they're on the floor. Can I talk about that intangible that, that Gio has, if you will? Well, the second G Giovanni got here, he was, he was uh, our leader, mm -hmm. you know, and, and – uh, it, it was pretty impressive. He came in, and his English wasn't quite as, you know, it's perfect now. It wasn't quite as good at that point. Um, <laughs> the sarcasm but, but sometimes was, gets in the uh, way, doesn't but, it? But, 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 he, uh, but, but he, he just stepped on, and, and he's been around the game his whole life. His, his dad's a coach. His brothers are players. He's an old-school point guard. You know, pass first, defend, anything the team needs to win. And in two and a half years, he he's, hasn't had a bad day. I mean, he walks in every single day. If, if we stick him on the scout squad the entire practice, he's okay, whatever, whatever the team needs. Uh, so he earned the players' respect. Uh, you know, Javon and, Javon and Keaton are terrific players, but, mm -hmm. but they've learned from him watching how he conducts himself. And, and uh, so his, his leadership is just uh, fantastic for our team. With your time in the United States, what do you like the most about here that you don't have at home in Italy? Uh, the facilities, definitely. You know, the weight room is amazing here. You know, also the gym is always open if you want to go get extra shots. In Italy, it's harder. You know, there's always somebody in the gym, always teams. The weight room is not the team's weight room, so you can go where, whenever mm -hmm. you want. And uh, I think, yeah, the facilities, you know, how many people is around the team, how many managers we have, they're inbound for you whenever you want how many coaches and that's something also my parents were shocked by like how many people we have around you know and uh in Italy you all have you know you have the coaches and that's about it yeah. and here you have the managers rebound for you and it's just amazing and then you got to get your brother or somebody to do you a favor and come rebound for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks as always Gio. congratulations on all your success so far and i will talk more as we go down the, the road this year i appreciate it. thank you so much all right giovanni de nicola out, out here with us on the uh, steve henson radio show we'll come back and talk about uh, the team a little bit more we'll preview middle tennessee and uab as we roll on in this final half hour, the Steve Vincent Radio Show, Wendy's uses fresh beef on every hamburger every day. Try it for yourself on a Dave's Double and taste the difference fresh beef makes. Fresh beef's available in the contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Canada. It's the Steve Vincent Radio Show from Learfield. 
Methodist Healthcare is the official hometown healthcare provider of UTSA Athletics and San Antonio's most preferred health system for all your healthcare needs. Go Roadrunners. We are out here at the Sandbox at, I, at the uh, corner of Mavcock and UTSA Boulevard. Also, if you're looking for a new or pre-owned car, then look no further than Ansira.com. Shop every make and model and one location and get a great low Ansira price only at Ansira.com. It's the Steve Henson Radio Show. UTSA and Middle Tennessee play on Thursday night. We're on the air at 6 o'clock with the Credit Human pregame show. They start their games at 6.30 on Thursday night, so we're on the air at 6. And then Saturday we come to you from the Bartow Arena in uh, Birmingham as uh, UTSA takes on UAB, and we'll be on the air at 6.30 Saturday night. Uh, let's uh, touch, Steve, on uh, Adokia EIA, a guy that you guys recruited last year and had his moments earlier in the year, but over the last two or three games, every time you put him in, he's done something good for you. He's doing a great job. He, uh, you know, as we talked about defining our roles and getting more comfortable, he, he's one of the two that stands out the most in that regard. He uh, just, he's, he's a good defender. He's versatile. All about team. He's been a winner. You know, he won one in high school. Uh, that's the only thing he's thinking about when he steps out on the court is doing whatever he can do to, to help us win if he, if he uh, needs to guard the best player, he'll do it. Uh, he'll move the ball and never take a bad shot. Uh, he struggled to shoot the three early on. He shot it great in practice, you know, all summer and all fall mm -hmm. and then just couldn't get any fall in games. So we just said, hey, just, just turn those down. You know, if you get it back with under 10 seconds left on the shot clock, then, then go ahead and jump up there and shoot it. But otherwise, try to drive it. He's, he's uh, kind of smooth, you know. He, he, he can just look real effortless at times in, in his ability to blow by people on closeouts, really good down there along the baseline. So he's doing good things for us. You can see his confidence grow. And I, and I think as, you know, when he's not thinking about shooting shooting threes, it's kind of taking away, taking away any indecision on his part. And uh, he's giving us great boost right now. We've had a little, you know, it, it allows us when we get a little foul trouble. Giovanni sometimes will we'll get that mm -hmm. cheap foul in there and, we don't panic now because we've got enough guys that can handle the ball, and, and he gives us great minutes. Let's uh, go uh, to the uh, phone lines, and uh, Miles wants to talk to Coach Henson tonight. Miles, you're on the Steve Henson Show. Hey, Coach. It's Miles Meter. Great game on Saturday. Can you comment on Javon obviously traveling on that last shot? Go, Mean Green. <laughs> Big shot for Javon Jackson. Yeah, no doubt about it. it was, thanks, Miles. Thanks, Miles. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for that. Now it's uh, it's not traveling if they don't call it. So there you go. Uh, let's uh, let's touch on um, the uh, we're talking about uh, EIA and you don't have a deep bench, but you have a very productive bench. A, a Tim's giving you solid minutes. Uh, a Rod when he, he you can get the right matchup. It's hard to play him against North Texas because of the four guards that they were playing. Uh, but uh, your bench has been productive, although not that deep. Yeah, those guys. Those, those you know, two guys have been playing pretty good minutes, A Tim and, and, and Doak. Uh, Adrian, Adrian is ready to be in there. He, he could go 15, 20 minutes a night for us. Uh, you know, if we had foul trouble with Nick or A Tim, um, yeah, it was just a tough, tough matchup. Plus, he did hurt his shoulder the other day on Thursday night. So, uh, but they're ready. You know, Mitar stays ready. And nobody works any harder than he does. We'll, typically, when we put him in the games, we we uh, feel good about it. So. Uh, we're not playing a lot of guys right now, but we've got, got guys that are ready to go. Mitar and Toby and both of those guys, they if there's a situation where you can use them, they're ready to go, as you mentioned. And they you don't expect them to score, but when they do, that gives you a little bit of a bonus. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Those guys just bring it every single day, and, and they're ready if we call, it, call on them. And, uh, you know, proud of Toby the way he's handling this, you know, his senior year, and he's not, not a – playing huge minutes, doesn't have a huge role, but uh, we just kept telling him, just got to enjoy it. You know, you got to enjoy it, and, and, and I think he's finding a way to do that and bringing pretty good energy to practice every day. He's leading leading the bench uh, in terms of finding a way to enjoy the games and, and all the exciting plays. So uh, that, that's an important part of, of the big picture is having, having everybody uh, looking forward to being around each other every day. Chemistry, you know, you get this point in the season, you know, you want a, you want a happy team, and, and our guys uh, – care about each other and, and our chemistry and, and uh, camaraderie is fantastic. What are your thoughts defensively when you're in a man-to-man -man defense as to whether you switch, which we do a lot of, or going over under screens and how you guard players? Is it situational or is there a philosophy that you uh, try to stick to? Well, for the most part, depending on, depending on matchups and personnel, who we have on the court, who they have on the court, but for the most part, we switch one, two, and three anytime the, the – they come together. If it's a dribble handoff, a pick, a uh, weak side exchange, 
uh, we don't worry about cross matches. You know, we just want to make sure we're matched up with somebody. We want to guard the ball like crazy. We want to help. We don't we don't panic on on cross matches and mismatches. So so we almost always switch one one through three. Um, you know, when Byron's the four, we're very, very comfortable having him switch on the guards. There's no issue with that whatsoever. Atem does a pretty good job switching on the guards. There's just a few actions sometimes that don't lend itself to that as well. So to keep it simple, we, we, we talk about switching three a lot. Unless there's a, a, a power forward that can pick and pop and shoot it, then maybe we switch those ball screens to take away the pick and pop shot. And that's a pretty pretty good uh, luxury to have is our forwards have the ability to, to switch on those plays. You have so much versatility. We do. We do. And, um, you know, we don't panic if, if our little guys get switched on to big guys and they try to go post us. You know, we just feel like we're going to win enough of those battles, you know, whether we go dig it out of there or whether we try to steal the post entry. Uh, we just Our philosophy is the mismatches aren't going to beat us, the, the ball is going to beat us, and open guys are going to beat us. So we try to never uh, – do a bad job on the ball, and we try not to have open guys. All right. We'll talk about Middle Tennessee and UAB coming up in the next segment. You can celebrate a Roadrunners victory at Taco Palenque on their inviting patio. Let the experience begin at Palenque Grill at La Cantera, proud sponsor of UTSA Athletics. It's the Steve Henson Radio Show presented by Methodist Healthcare from Learfield. From Learfield. We are back out here at the Sandbox. Health Texas Medical Group is about your overall well-being, not just your health. Their commitment to you is outstanding care every patient, every time. And Texas Farm Bureau Insurance members get two free tickets to Roadrunner basketball games when you show proof of membership at the ticket office. Visit your local agent's office for details. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud sponsor of UTSA Athletics. Well, the opponents this week are Middle Tennessee and UAB. Middle Tennessee's kind of fallen on hard times, Steve, with uh, the uh, loss of Kermit Davis going to Ole Miss to coach uh, there. And also uh, with the – I look at their roster the other night. I didn't recognize hardly anybody on their team from what we've seen in the past. But it is a road game, and it's always difficult no matter who you're playing on the road. Yeah, no question. Uh, yeah, they had some roster turnover. They had some upperclassmen last year, some seniors graduated and moved on, and a few kids transferred out. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little different look for them. Um, but, but, yeah, road games are tough. You know, conference games are tough, and going on the road is tough. Um, we know that. Our guys will be excited. You know, I don't think our guys are going to look at Middle Tennessee's record. I think they're going to look at Middle Tennessee mm -hmm. and know how good they've been, uh, the culture they've established. Uh, you know, they, they handled us pretty easily there last year. Our guys will, will want to play much better, and I think our guys will uh, go in there with the right amount of respect and the right approach. What kind of team, uh, what are, uh, when they're playing well, what do they do well this year? Yeah, they're a really, really good rebounding team. They've they're, they got good size, good athletes. They're not shooting it great, um, but, but they're playing fast, uh, working pretty hard defensively, mixing up their defenses, play, you know, little, most, mostly man, but they're playing quite a bit of zone. They, they've kept some of the 1-3-1 uh, look that they've had in the past. Um, I think one of the assistants is probably pushing that. So 1-3-1s uh, one can throw a little, little – you know, we talked about zones earlier. Yeah. Throw a little wrench in our offense. We've got to be ready for that. Um, and, again, again, good athletes, and, and they're at home. Winning on the road. Uh, talk about that. You've been on teams as a player and as a coach where I'm sure you've had success on the road in seasons where you have not. When you break it down, what is usually the key to having road success? Well, leadership, you know, goes, goes a long ways, you know, and, and maturity and leadership, which are things we've been talking about since uh, – the summer, you know, I, th I think that, that will give us a chance. Um, and, and, and you, gotta, you have to defend. You have to take care of the basketball. You know, mm -hmm. you can't go on the road and turn the ball over. Uh, we, we've made a lot of progress there just the last few ball games in that regard. It just four turnovers in the second half against North Texas, even when the pace picked up a little bit. Um, you got to got to compete offensively, just like defensively. You know, that's kind of our theme right now. We're working awfully hard defensively. But you got to compete to get good shots. You got to compete to get good shots on the road. Uh, and you got to value the basketball, take care of that basketball, and rebound. And then Middle Tennessee is a very, very good rebounding team. Uh, if there's one area where maybe we have leveled off or even taken a slight step back, I think it's with our rebounding effort. Uh, so it's going to be an emphasis on that the next couple of days. And uh, got to get in there, hold our own on the boards, and take care of the basketball. Uh, UAB is the Saturday game. You won't watch a lot of film on them until you get past Middle Tennessee. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. But I recall last year, you always talk about Friday practices, and we got pretty much blown out at Middle Tennessee last thir on a Thursday last year. We went to UAB and had a terrific Friday practice and then won at Bartow Arena last year. Yeah, we, our guys remember that very, very vividly. That was kind of a turning point for us, 
for us. You know, we'd lost a couple home games uh, to, to teams that weren't expected to be near the top. And then we went on the road with that road trip. And, yeah, like I said, we just you know, got whooped by Middle Tennessee. UAB was a good team. We knew that was going to be a difficult game. But uh, the practice Friday was good. And we sat down with some of our guys that were taking the bulk of our shots and just, just showed them the shots they were taking and talked about, you know, working a little harder to have better possessions. I'm not telling them not to shoot it because we were all our good shooters that were taking those shots. But, but hey, that, that's, that's a decent shot. Can we work for a good shot? Can we work for a great shot? And then we went out the next day and, and we defended like crazy. Uh, we moved the ball. We made shots. And probably one of our best games of the year. Typically, teams are going to have runs. And I go back to the UTEP game where you had, I thought, the game in your favor for a while. They make a run, take a seven or eight or nine-point lead, whatever it was. And you talk about there's no panic. The team, I mean, he took a timeout. The team goes through its its progressions, whatever they did, and they fought their way back. And all of a sudden, five minutes later, you you have the lead and you're on the way to a win. And not letting a seven point lead get to 14 is is critical sometimes, when, or all the time when you're on the road, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, for sure. We got you know, we got to. I'm a little reluctant to use timeouts when teams are making a run because we want to always have one or two uh, for the very end of the game if we need them. But uh, sometimes you have to burn a timeout a little earlier if the team's making a run at home if the crowd gets going. Um, those, those are the things that, that can happen on the road, you know. Um, so, so yeah, and, and we've had some stretches this year where we, we struggle to score. So mm-hmm. uh, we just got to got to maintain our poise, and, and I think I think that's another area that, that we've shown improvement. You know, a couple games early in the year, we did panic a little bit. We got behind, and, and each guy felt like, you know, I got to go make this play, and, you know, that's not the way it works. You just got to chip away at things. And you hate it when you have to take that time out, and you're already under the media, and you know the yeah. media is coming. You don't yeah. want to take it, but sometimes you have to. Yeah, you're always, when you're getting close to that media, if the other team's making a little run, you're just, just weighing the, the uh, situation. And can, can we, if we get a bucket here, you know, we'll make it to the media. If, if they score, we're probably going to have to take that time out. If we can get a stop, maybe we can make it. Um, but those are those, the things that, that you deal with. One more segment to go on this defense and radio show out here at the Sandbox at UTSA and Babcock. Methodist Healthcare is the official hometown healthcare provider of UTSA Athletics and San Antonio's most preferred health system for all your health care needs. Go Roadrunners. We'll finish up the Steve Vincent Show next. This uh, is the Steve Vincent Show from Learfield. All right, it's the final segment of the Steve Vincent Radio Show. A reminder that Wendy's uses fresh beef on every hamburger every day. Try it for yourself on a Dave's Double and taste the difference fresh beef makes. Fresh beef's available in the contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Canada. All right, you got two more days of practice before we head off Wednesday to uh, Nashville and the bus trip down to Murfreesboro and then on to UAB. What uh, do you work on specifics, or are you just fine-tuning right now as you get ready for the UAB game? Yeah, a little of both. You know, we'll get right into some things specifically tomorrow. Today we, we did some things defensively just to, to keep working on our base, you know, which is really good right now. Um, you know, we've we're, we got everybody kind of working together. We're on a string. Our communication is good. Uh, so we had a, just a real intense defensive segment today. Not long, but, but sharp and crisp. Liked our guys' energy in that, that portion today. We spent a little time working on uh, some of the newer offensive stuff we've put in the last few weeks. Tried to clean that up a little bit. And we took a little little bit of time and worked on some zone. You know, we anticipate Middle Tennessee throwing a little 1-3-1 at us. So uh, a little bit of everything today. And then uh, come back tomorrow and get real mo- a lot more specific uh, with how to guard their actions, uh, what we want to do on, on their personnel. And uh, same thing on Wednesday. But, yeah, we've got two full days of practice coming up and a, and a shoot-around on game day. So uh, there, there won't be any surprises by Thursday night. Yeah, the, uh, I've, I see a real sense of urgency on this team from the get-go of these last four or five games where they're really locked in uh, right as the ball goes up. Uh, there's a, you can see they're helping each other defensively. There's just something different when conference play starts. Yeah, there, there is, especially when, you know, we got off to a slow start. And so uh, our guys knew, you know, that, that when conference play started, it's a, you know, everybody was 0-0 in conference play, and we wanted to get off to a good start. And, uh, you know, Several different portions to your season. You get your non-conference, you get your conference regular season, you get your postseason, and uh, each one of them, you know, brings new excitement. And our guys have, have handled that the right way. Thanks so much for the uh, visit tonight. We'll look forward to next week back at a regular time at seven o'clock, and uh, let's see if we can steal a couple on the road this week. Thanks, Andy. All right, Steve Finson, the Steve Finson Radio Show. Again, a reminder: Thursday night we're on the air at six o'clock. Ticket seven sixty. The iHeart app. Go utsa.com and tune in. 
and 6.30 on Saturday night from uh, Alabama against UAB. Have a great evening, everyone. This has been the Steve Vincent Radio Show presented by Methodist Healthcare from Learfield.